friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Hello Bluebird's Peekaboo O Nuts and Word Bunnies Woodlands stamp sets. So I've stamped the images I'll be using on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. And I'm going to be coloring with my Copics to match some pattern paper from the Simple Stories Acorn Lane 6x8 pad. So I'm going to tear out the sheet that I'm going to use as my color inspiration and just tuck it under the corner of my cardstock panel so I can pull my color palette from that. So I'm starting with my red squirrels and I'm going to use a different combo than I ever have before on them. Red squirrels are my favorite animal. So you've probably seen me color them quite a few times in the past, but I am using a brand new combination this time. I wanted it to lean a little bit more orange because I wanted it to match the little orange hearts that are in that pattern paper. So I pulled out YR12, YR14, and YR18, which is what I usually use for foxes, and added in the E19, which I do typically use for red squirrels to give it a little extra darkness. Now I didn't end up using this combo exactly as I laid it out, so I didn't use the YR12 at all. Um, it was gonna be too light. The YR14 ended up being the lightest shade that I did use. But I also decided that it wasn't quite dark enough. It just looked too much like foxes to me. So I am going to darken up this combo in just a minute. But right now I'm starting with that darkest shade, the E19, and adding in my shadows with that on this largest squirrel. This is going to be the mama on my little scene here, or the adult squirrel. It could be a daddy if you want. Um, so I laid in the shadows of that, blended out with the YR18, and then I filled everything in with the YR14. But like I said, it just was looking a little bit too much like foxes for me, since that is my go-to combo for them. So I decided to add in the E18, and even though the E18 is, you'd think it would be lighter than the E19, but it's actually quite a bit darker and has a lot more of a brown tone, where the E19 definitely leans more towards the red tone. So I'm gonna use the E18 to darken up this combo, and I'm just gonna do a second layer on this largest squirrel. I do that a lot with especially larger images, so, you know, you just can just go back over the coloring that you previously did. So I use the E18 for my shadows this time, blend it out with the E19, and then use the YR18 mainly for my lightest, but I did add in a little of that YR14 on the top of the tail. And I'm going to do that for the babies as well. So I'm going to start coloring these guys. These are from the Word Buddies Woodland. And I'm going to go back to that darkest shade, the E18. And I'm going to lay in my shadows with that, depending on how they are situated. I like to keep the face nice and light. So I am going to shade them in the direction that they're facing. Shadows falling on the back and then the highlight falling on the face. In this case, it wouldn't have really mattered because the face is going to be a completely different color, which will be lighter. But that's just typically how I do my shading so that the, the highlighted area really shows off their adorable features, whatever critter or kiddo I happen to be coloring. So I used that E18. I was really sparing with that because these guys are quite a bit smaller. I didn't want to get too heavy handed with that darkest color and have them just look really dark and then blend it out with the E19 and then use the YR18 for most of the highlight. The only place I used the YR14 on the squirrels was on the top of the tail since it is kind of lifted up and I just figured it would be catching the light even more. It's, it's a nice large round area so it doesn't hurt to have that extra fourth shade in there although you certainly could just fill everything in with the YR18 and it wouldn't make that much of a difference. So you can see I flipped my shadows now and I'm coloring with my darkest, the E18, on the right hand side of this little squirrel since he's facing toward the left. And then again, I'm just going to only use that YR14 at the very top of the tail, just leave a little sliver of that space for that. 
And I'm going to leave the belly light as well. Um, red squirrels do have a really light white or cream colored belly area. Um, if you see pictures of them or happen to get lucky to see one in person, they are so super sweet. I just really, really adore them. I love the little chattering noises that they make. And it, there's a big difference though between red squirrels and like regular gray squirrels. Red squirrels have so much personality. Not that gray squirrels don't, but it's the red squirrels that have my heart completely. I just adore them. I love the little tufts on their pointed ears. I just, I think they're just delightful little creatures. So I'm bringing in that YR18 uh, around the little belly of the one that's sitting up just to have a little bit of transition area on that. And then for that lighter area for the face and belly, I'm going to use E00 with E30 and E31. So E31 is what I'm going to place as my shadows right around the outer edges of the face. And then I'll blend that out with a little bit of the E30. And then I'll soften that with the E00. And I did leave a little bit of white space in the center for some extra highlight. And I'll color the other three little guys the same. And then also color in their bellies with these shades if they're showing. So for the three little ones, you can see a little bit of their belly on each one. It's only the larger squirrel that you can't really see much. Um, I decided to just color the chest area red on her just to make it easier for myself since there wasn't much um, delineation there between what was the top of the chest and what was the belly. I also threw a little of that into the big squirrel's ears and then I'm going to add some rosy cheeks and I'm going to go a little bit more orange toned than I normally would for rosy cheeks. I'm using R01 and R02 just to try to tie into that pattern paper and keep a similar color palette. It's not exact to that pink in the pattern paper, but it's kind of in between the pink and the orange there. So I'm going to clean up any lines that kind of bled out with a white gel pen. It's just a really quick and easy way to clean up. A lot of times I'll use my colorless blender, but when the colors are red, it's really hard to push them back. So a gel pen does the trick and you can't even tell that anything was ever out of the lines. I'm moving on to my acorns and I'm going to color them like the acorns on the pattern paper. So I went with a very desaturated grayed out brown and that is E43, E44, and E47. I'm adding the darkest, the E47, where those lines are drawn and then blending toward the left with the E44 and then the E43. And then I'm also going to use these shades for my tree branch. So I'm gonna add that E47 down at the bottom because the light would be coming from above because the light is the sun, obviously. And so the top of the branch is going to have the most highlight and the bottom would be the most shaded. So I use that E47 just very carefully using the very tip of my marker and thin little strokes so I have nice control so I can get in all those little nooks and crannies there with those really thin little branches. And then again, blend it up toward the top with the E44 and then filled in the rest with the E43. For the caps of my acorns, these are quite different. So I wanted to try to do that kind of grayish tone. Um, and so I ended up going with E70, E71 and E74. That was the closest I could get to match with my Copics. And I think it did a pretty good job. I am going to add in a little extra darkness with that E74 just to make the shadows even more bold and blend that out with the E71 again, but I only did one layer of the lightest shade. Now for the leaves, I wanted to kind of do something that would bring in both the orange hearts and the pink of the pattern paper. So I'm gonna to try to do like a gradation on my leaves using YR01, YR02, YR12, and YR14, which was also in the squirrels. That was the highlight on the top of the tail. 
So I'm going to start with the YR14 at the base of each of these leaves. I did one to kind of test out the combo and make sure I was going to like it. And then I just went ahead and did them all the same. So the YR14 is on the base of each leaf and then kind of going up the line in the center. And then I'm going to blend that out with the YR12. Just blending out the edges of that and softening up that darker color. And then once I have that laid in on all the leaves, that is when I'm going to transition into the YRO2, which has a lot of kind of salmon-y shade. It's, it's kind of pink leaning. It's like very peachy. So again, it's not going to be a perfect match for that pattern paper, but it is going to tie in that warmer pink tone that is in that pattern paper. And then I'll use the YR01 to fill in the edges of all of those leaves. And the YR01 is pretty close to that pattern paper. It's not going to be a perfect match, but you know, it's Copics. So it's, you know, they're going to be a little bit brighter and more vibrant. I did add in a second layer of the YR14, and then I took a black Sakura Jelly Roll pen, got that going off to the side, and then I'll go over the eyes of all of my little red squirrels to make them bright and shiny again. Extra step, but I just love doing it. I think it adds so much. And then I'll trim these images out with their matching dies. So next I wanted to incorporate the brand new Autumn Acorn die that Hello Bluebird just released. And I wanted to color it with Copic markers so it would exactly match the acorns that I've already colored from the Peekaboo stamp set. So I die cut it out of more Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock. And I'm going to color it with the same exact shades as I did on those smaller acorns. So for the nut of the acorn, I'm using E43, E44, and E47. And I am blending from the right side with the dark to the highlight on the left, just as I colored them in the stamp form. And I am going to do a second layer of that just because it is such a large die cut and I want to make sure that my blend smooths out nicely. So I'm just going to go back and forth. You can see that I'm using the side of my marker nib, kind of laying it almost sideways so I can put down a lot of color at once. And that's also going to help me get a nice smooth blend. So I'll set that aside and work on the cap. And for the cap, I'm going to go back to the shades that I used for the stamped acorns, which is E70, E71, and E74. Now you do have to be a little bit careful when you are coloring die cuts with Copic markers like this because once that paper gets extra saturated it becomes very soft and so it's easy to bend. Also the fact that this die cuts in those little scalloped edges um, it also makes it a little bit less sturdy so you do have to be careful so i'm trying to blend in the direction toward the edges of that cardstock so i bend it as little as possible um, and i could have gone a little bit slower and been more delicate but anyway i'm going to move on to my background next and i'm going to combine two different shades to try to replicate something similar to that pattern paper the first shade I'm going to use is Saltwater Taffy, which is a very pale peachy pink tone, but it is too saturated for that pattern paper. It's too bright. So I need to desaturate that a little bit and tone it down. So I'm going to bring in some antique linen and I'm going to blend right over top of what I've already done. And it's going to look weird at first because the colors are going to layer on top of each other and the antique linen isn't really doing the um, salt or taffy that much justice. But I am going to do a second layer of the saltwater taffy over top and having that antique linen kind of sandwiched between the layers, I think ended up with something pretty close to that pattern paper. I'll compare it in a little minute and we'll see but I think it did a pretty good job. There you can see, it's not exact, but it's pretty darn close. It's in the realm of that color that's in the pattern paper. 
I'm going to add some little splatters of some plain white water. So I'm going to add that to an acrylic block and tap it off so I can get small little droplets. And then I'll let that react for a little bit with that Distress Oxide ink and then blot it up with a paper towel. I wanted to have a little bit more on there, so I'll do a second round and then blot that up once again. And then I also wanted to add some darker splatters and I wanted to tie in the brown tones. So I started with gathered twigs, but it was a little too yellow leaning for the brown that I had used in my coloring. Again, it needed more desaturated uh, brown. So I added in some ground espresso to that to just kind of darken it up a bit. And I'm gonna splatter that all over the background just to give it some extra interest. And then I also wanted to do a little bit of gold splatter, so I'm doing my Ganzai Tambi Starry Colors, and I just picked this third shade here, and I'll tap that all over the background as well. That'll give it a nice flash of gold shimmer when you tip the card into the light. So I'm going to just set this panel aside to dry. And in the meantime, I'm going to work on my sentiment. So I'm first going to take the Hello Bluebird Nightly LC Large Alpha dies and tape those down to some Lawn Fawn ground coffee cardstock. And I'm spelling out the word nuts. So I'm just going to take those letters and tape them down and run them through my die cut machine. And then you can see that they have like a little border. So I also die cut those out of some craft cardstock. And then for the second part of my sentiment, I'm taking the Jane Small Alpha dies and cutting out the words for you without the O's out of some fake tan cardstock from Lawn Fawn. So I'm taping the letters that I'll need in place. And then once I'm done, I can just pop the letters out. Two of them fell out easily, and then the other ones are just tucked back up on, under there. So as soon as I pull them out, um, pull off the dies. It's very easy to just pop out the remaining die cut into my little Twiddler's Nook embellishment tray, which I'm using to collect them all. And then I'm also going to stamp on the inside of my card, and I'm doing that in walnut ink. I'm taking an image and a sentiment from O Nuts. I'm keeping it very simple for this one because I'm not really sure who I'm sending this card to yet. So I left plenty of room to customize it with a handwritten message. Then I trimmed down my pattern paper with my paper trimmer to fit the front of my standard A2 size card. So it's four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. I'm gonna fit that to cover the entire front and then the reverse side is a perfect match. So I'm just gonna flip that over and glue that down across the center of the card going horizontally. And by the way, I did just do a whole fall mix and match pattern paper with me video. So if you missed that and are interested in how to mix different prints of pattern paper, you can check that out on my channel. I trimmed the focal panel down with the nesting decal A2s and popped that up with some foam tape on the center of my card. So now I'm ready to start assembling my scene. And the first thing I'm gonna do is figure out the placement of this large nut. That is kind of the main image that your eye is going to be drawn to on this card front with the little squirrel in it, of course. So I wanna make sure that I have it placed correctly. So I'm gonna tuck that squirrel into the slot that the die cuts and then um, and figure out where I want the cap to go. So I'm kind of tucking it over the back of the nut, but behind the squirrel, if that makes sense, and then taping that into place with a little bit of post-it tape as well. So then I can figure out where I want the tree to go. I wanted that to go right up toward the top of the scene because the sentiment is gonna be nice and bold as well, so I need plenty of room. So I'm going to use the tree as a placeholder to figure out where to glue that nut down. And then I was also trying to decide if I wanted it just straight up and down or a little bit tilted to the left or the right. I ended up going slightly tilted with the bottom toward the left. 
And then once I have that in place, I can glue my tree right over top. So it looks like that large acorn is hanging from the tree branch, which I think is just so fun because obviously that nut is so large and heavy and in comparison to the leaves, it's huge. But I just think it's such a fun look to kind of have it hanging from the branch. And then I wanted to have the large squirrel holding another one of the leaves just to have a little break in all of that brown of that large nut right underneath her. So I just added that right where her little hands are. And then one of the baby squirrels is going to go up on that top branch. So I went ahead and put that there. And next I'm going to start working on my sentiment because I need to figure out the placement of that before I add any of the rest of the images. So I'm taking out the Nightly LC Large Alphas and I'm going to switch the outlines with the inner portion. So I will pop out the thicker part of the letter and then just reverse it. So the dark brown letter goes in the craft outline and the craft letter goes in the dark brown outline. And I'm not sure which version I'm going to use on this card yet. I just wanted to switch them out and see because um, whichever one I don't end up using on today's card, I can save and use for another card. So I'm just making sure that I have the correct letters. The U and the N look very similar, but the top of the U, the left side is a little bit higher than the right side. So that's how you know the difference. So um, yeah, it's really easy to figure it out once you realize that. But I really love how much character that little outline gives these letters. I think it's a lot of fun to try to mix and match different colors to use on your card or maybe even use some glitter paper or whatever you want to do. Um, so now I'm going to try out the two different versions and see which one I like better. So I started with the craft with the dark brown outline and I wasn't loving that. I wasn't feeling like it really matched as well as maybe the dark brown version would. So I'm trying out that next and I definitely prefer it. I just think it's makes such a bold statement on this card since a lot of the other elements are very pale and uh, soft. I just wanted something that was a little bit more bold. So I'm going to use the darker brown inner portion and I'm just popping out the little bits of the S that didn't fall out from the die cut with the needle from my Barely Art Precision craft glue. So I'm going to lay them out. I wanted them to be a little bit staggered just to give it more of a fun, whimsical look. And then I'm using that Barely Art Precision Craft Glue because I want to make sure that I also get some glue behind that outline. Um, it's very narrow, but that's the great thing about having glue with this fine tip nozzle. You're able to really get right along those edges of those really delicate die cuts like the outline is. So I'm just making sure that I have enough glue on both the letter and the outline, but not so much that it's going to splooge out everywhere. And then I'm just going to press that down into place. And I like having the letters laid out already so I know exactly how to space them and use the others as a placeholder as you just glue down one at a time. So I also wanted to add that T up a little bit higher into the large die cut acorn just to kind of minimize how large it is, I guess. So just incorporate that sentiment a little bit more into the overall design. Then I'm going to take the rest of the letters for the sentiment from the Jane Small Alphas and lay those out, kind of figure out my placement, and I will... Um, take my little tweezers, my reverse tweezers from EK Success, and use those to help me glue them down. So I'm going to start with the F and get that kind of spaced on the left hand side where I want it. And then I'm going to go to the other end with the U and try to space that equally away from the edge as the F. And then I'm going to bring in the acorns that are going to make up the O's in both of those letters. So I'll have one in four and one in U. And I just want to have them tipped slightly 
to um, kind of just add that extra bit of whimsy to tie into the sentiment above. So I'm just figuring out the placement there. I want to make sure that there's enough room between the two words so that you can clearly read them both. And then I'll start to glue those down into place. So I'm just working now again from the left hand side first, getting those situated and then I'll work from the right side toward the center again. So just as I feared, I didn't quite leave enough room in the center as I should have. I should have placed the F and the U just slightly further out than I did. The F, there was no way I was going to get that back up because this glue does dry permanent very quickly. But the U had been put down, you know, more recently. So I was able to peel that up and shift the acorn over just slightly. Because the Y already had glue on it, I went ahead and glued that down first. And then I'm just gonna glue the U over top. And it did leave behind like a little tiny bit of cardstock behind it. So I'm just making sure to cover that up when I place the U back down. So the U is a little bit closer to the right than the F is to the left, but it's all good. I, I don't think it's that noticeable unless you're somebody like me that really pays attention to that stuff. Um, but my other two squirrels are going to be sitting on the word nuts. This little guy is going to go on top of the N. And then this one that has his paws up is going to sit on the S and kind of lean on the T. So I'll just add those guys into place. I think they look so super cute. I love the mix of these little stamp sets. I think it's so fun to mix and match. I did want to add a little bit of extra sparkle. So I took three clear sequins and glued those down using my Studio Katia embellishment wand. And then I did consider adding on a fourth sequin, but it was just too much. The card had enough going on already. So I decided to leave it at three. And then I brought in my platinum stickles, which I have really been loving this fall season. And I added just a tiny little amount to each of the leaves. As I've said in several of my videos when I use these, it does cover up your coloring. So you wanna be cautious uh, where you put it. And so I just use a tiny, tiny bit, but I think the little flash of something sparkly is always nice. And then I filled in the centers of my sequins as well. And that is gonna finish off this card. So I will lift that up to the camera so you can see all of the detail and the sparkle and shine and give you another peek at the inside. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. I actually love how it turned out. I love that big bold sentiment and of course the red squirrels and the pretty color palette. So if you enjoyed it too, please be sure to hit that like button and leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. I invite you to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell if you always wanna be alerted when I post a new video. All of the products I use will be listed and linked for you in the description bar below. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. You can click on either one to check them out. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I hope you had a good one, and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.